Thank you once again. Uh, CW would like to take this opportunity to thank the CASA for giving us this time to present what we have submitted earlier on as per the request from the discussion document. We, we want to put on record that in terms of our submission, it is more related to our exposure. Could you introduce yourself, sir, please? And turn on the microphone. Thank you very much, and thanks for that. My name is Val Chantuluki. I'm the National Collective Bargaining Coordinator of Communication and Casino. I'm with Comrade Tsepandi Siva, who is also the National Negotiator based at Telcom. Uh, as I earlier on indicated, that as an organization, we've got various roles which we are playing as CW, particularly which relates to our membership within the ICT sector, and also we've got the social responsibility which we are carrying as part of the part of COSATU, as we are affiliated to COSATU. Uh, like it is captured here in the slides that in as far as our understanding in terms of the democratic dispensation uh, as a trade union and the role which we are playing here we will be making our submission and our submission with regard to local loop and bundling will also be based on our experiences We've got membership in Telcom SA, the Post Office, Vodacom, Celsi, Centec, Icasa, SABC, Usasa, and the others. Our main issues and our submission are more informed by the job security, prospects of job creation, socio-economic impact of type of the unbundling or to return the status quo, Expansion of the network to reach all the citizens, urban, rural, rich, poor, black, black and white, and township and suburb residents. We do not support monopolies in any sector. Uh, uh, with regard to the WEF Global Information Technology Report of 2010 to 2011, we have taken note of the statistics which are captured there and also we have looked into our ranking as the country which are also captured there. Also looking into our situation which we believe it, it has not been corrected as fast as we would like have to see our, our situation in the country being corrected we also looked into the digital divide, and therefore, we, we are also asking the question, who will be benefiting from the local loop and bundling? And our answer there, as you can see, we are saying that the rich, most probably white, the urban population who resides within the suburbs. And we are stating this element because we know for a fact that the issue in relation to to the ICT services has been uh, actually been based on the, on the suburb areas. And also our townships have been suffering in terms of getting the proper network to provide for such services. The rural areas are more disadvantaged and most probably the black townships which we are relating to. There is also an indication of where we are as a country there which relates to to what is happening internationally, and this is where you can see South Africa, where it, it lies. Uh, we have taken note of the costs that the NLU requires operational coordination, and also that ordering, provisioning, testing, billing, force handling, the service level agreements may be required in such areas, particularly with regard to pricing and also increase in energy needs. The issue, in particular the pricing of LLU, which we have taken note within the CASA 
discussion that you made, how you want to deal with it. You've taken note of that. And usually the labor costs are the first which companies will be looking into to say, maybe looking into also balancing with their profits, whether the company will survive or not. Uh, the one area also we looked into is the national security, which we believe that NLU will increase the risk of the national security. More service providers providing different services at different layers of the network will also result in greater risk. The insufficient network coverage, which I earlier on indicated that the current network does not extend to the previously disadvantaged areas. Many new and old townships do not have access to fixed line network only to the mobile networks. The rural areas fixed line telephony is non-existent. <coughs> so therefore, our issue here is that LLU will not benefit townships and rural areas where the poor and the marginalized are residing. Also take into consideration the technology. New techniques, new applications, new software and hardware will definitely have a bearing on both the new entrants and, and the incumbent. In operationality, in operation, oper, in operability and in computability aspects of the different electronic equipments might also prove to be complex. Technology neutrality is essential for fair competition. Now, also taking into consideration the new work methods and administration, the new regulation burden will pressurize incumbent to either enhance or create new system, delivery and maintenance of the corporate pay and service guarantees. Supplying of all information necessary for the implementation of LLU is one requirement there. Arrangements for coalition, connection of collated equipment to the network of the access seekers. Uh, we also ask ourselves the, the, the question that why unbundling the local law? And in doing this, we, we came to, to this conclusion that unbundling the local law is similar to number portability. Where number portability allows an end user to switch service providers without having to change the number. And partly the local loop allows an end user to utilize the same physical connection, for example, a traditional telephone line, whilst having the choice of a service provider to access the services that are available over the physical connection. And this is what ICASA also gave guidance on. Who are the end users? Here in our view is that not black people in general and Africans in particular, not the poor and the marginalized, not the township residents, in particular those living in townships created by the provisions of the RDP houses, not the rural population of South Africa. Uh, and will not give an answer there, it's obvious. The capacity of the regulator, this is ICASA now, needs to be capacitated to deal with the complexities of an angle. Monetary will be difficult. Monetary and human resources, ICASA does not have a national footprint. Did ICASA budget for LLU? These are some of the questions also we are asking. Physical inspect the incumbents premises. We, we are also looking into this because of the history of ICASA. We have been complaining in terms of the capacity of ICASA, whether ICASA is able to, to carry its mandate as mandated by government to make sure that the regulations they are creating and monitoring are there to do its work. <laughs> uh, collocation also processes required to determine and agree who will provide technical resources, connect technical equipment to access seekers, who will carry the cost of this process. These are the questions we are asking ourselves. Now the most important thing is the timing of LLU. We have taken note in terms of the decision which was taken in 2007 and also the delays which have been going on and on and the process we are carrying on now. Uh, looking into whether it is, too, it is little too late, <coughs> the incumbent is financially unstable. Currently the incumbent is no longer the dominant player in the ICT and here we are referring to Telcom SA. 
Any negative impact on the incumbent forced by regulations may lead to massive job losses of the incumbents and its suppliers' employees. And also looking into this while we are raising this point is because we know for the fact that Telcom is the major employer within, within the ICT and it, it has got more than 21,000 employees. Looking into the other competitors there, they are having lower, they are actually low in terms of employment and also looking into what they are doing that everyone is restructuring, making sure that they are bringing down the number of employees or human resources. What we have considered, no local loop and bundling is our, our position. And firstly, looking into this, why we are saying no look and bundling, because we have raised various issues, including the timing. We have looked into various aspects also, and said, but will this look, uh, local loop and bundling do any good to South Africa? The answer to us was no. If yes, there is a consideration with regard to the bit stream access, which seems to, to be better. After considering the fact that the majority of South Africans won't benefit, only option is that we should go for a no local loop and bundling. Because we are looking into the threat to the job security, and looking into the threat to the job security, we are also looking into the fact that, yes indeed, the process is at an advanced stage, and we believe that we, we can still go for for the status quo, looking into the various options available to ourselves and also looking or talking to those who are involved within the sector to, to consider that point. Uh, in conclusion, we would like to, to say local loop and bundling can only be supported if and when the network is accessible to the majority of South Africans. This is one option we have raised, looking into what we said most of the places in South Africa are not covered by the network we are talking about here. At least 60% penetration of fixed lines required before any LLU should be considered. Service-based competition will not lead to creation of jobs in the long term, and we believe that the infrastructure-based competition will lead to job creation in the short and long term. While, while we know that this Okay, it's, 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 it's an area which is debatable. LLU will not lead to universal access <coughs> due to limitations in network coverage and national security concern. A lot more research is needed. Uh, also looking into the, the BRICS country, we, we have looked or tried to, to research on which of the countries have gone the route of local loop and bundling. And to us, we didn't find any of the countries having implemented the local loop and bundling. So therefore, for us, as one of the developing countries, we don't believe it is the right time to go this road. And we believe that it should be suspended and be considered at a later stage. Further to that, we have considered questions which were also asked by ICASA when we were involved in this process. That is, have, whether have we conducted a study to determine the impact of LLU regu regulations on employment? We, we haven't done that, and we only looked into the available research work, which were, which were there. We looked into many other issues. Maybe it was because of the capacity also from our side, and also from the people we are working with. Whether it is possible for LLU as an opportunity and not a threat, for us, we said that no, we don't believe that LLU will give us more opportunities. Rather, we are looking into areas where we, we are concerned about it being a threat to us. The reason why we are looking into this, we looked into the aspect of the universal services and also universal access. Looking into the current network situation, this is where we are highly considering this aspect and saying that it will not help now. 
rather if it is done at a later stage maybe when the network is corrected it, it can succeed to assist in terms of the idea which has been captured within the discussion document making sure that the competitive the, the competition platform is leveled uh, we also looked into the question which are saying do we have a business case for the introduction of bitstream like we indicated here we believe that yes indeed if it is looked into it can it can it can be considered positively we also and maybe looked into what MTN has indicated to say the, can, the current situation might be related to Bitstream, what is happening within the ICT environment. It might be related to that. And now coming to, to the aspect of regulating it, that is where the concern was. Uh, also, we have also looked into the question which was saying, what is the situation on the ground? Is Telcom utilizing its copper network optimally? Is the asset being used effectively for the good of the country? Here the answer will be clear to us to say, no, not to our understanding that Telcom is utilizing that optimally and fully. There are various reasons, and we have also been looking into the historic part of it, where Telcom, from the beginning, before they went into a massive retrenchment in 2000, they were employing more than 60,000 employees, and that went down. There were some, some conditions which were set by government, and at a certain point, it was our understanding that Telcom did not meet all the conditions which were set while they were a monopoly by that time. And therefore, it happened that there were lots of lines which were cut, and in some areas, the network did not reach most people in South Africa. So for us, the answer was to say that no, it is not. We, we also looked into some areas, and we did not respond to all the questions which were submitted to us, and we believe that when opportunities arise, at a certain point, we'll be able to respond to that after getting more information in relation to what has been written. However, we had some concerns also in as far as the information which, which is contained within the ICASA discussion document, where we did not get some of the information which supports what ICASA has raised, particularly with regard to how jobs will be created. We didn't get much information with which was relating to that. And also how the revenue of the incumbent and other competitors will be increased when the LLU is introduced. We haven't got much of the information with regard to that. And while we, we will also take the responsibility to say we didn't ma make more follow-ups in relation to, to getting that, we, we trusted also our own Naledi, which does research for us to get most of the information. But when we came here, we didn't have all the full report from Naledi. So I believe my comrade will make some additions so that we can close our presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Chair. Thanks, Comrade Vulture. As Comrade Vulture stated, my name is Tsepam Nisima. Uh, Chair, the, the other concern that, 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 that we are having, or maybe to, to, uh, to elaborate on what Vasha was saying, is that uh, as the president, the state president has said this year, that we must start to, to, to create jobs. And then also the minister said that the ICT must play its role on creating jobs. And then if we check in Telcom, most of the employees, that the, the number that Comrade Vulture submitted, they are full-time employees. And then in other companies, we, we are using labor brokers. And then we must check that if we talk about decent jobs, what kind of jobs are we talking about? 
and then again the, the technical aspect of the, the LLU on other three three options. Is it that feasible? Because also like what we, we, we raised earlier in one of the meetings is that the consultants or the technical experts that ICASA will be using are they giving the the fully the full analysis of the technical aspects of the, the LLU on all three options? And then again, if you check the main cause of this LLU is broadband. As broadband currently is the is the driving force behind the economic growth because we are in the digital stage. Now it's just to our view is that we are just shifting the profit to other companies. But ordinary South Africans in rural areas, black townships, they are not going to get anything from the LLU. And then we think it's high time that the country at large come with different methods to give access to the rural areas, to the townships. Because if currently you check the RDP houses or townships that have been built by government, currently there's no infrastructure. But now it's just about competition. It's just about the urban areas. If I see somebody that is making 100 trends, I want to, to get the share of that 100 trends. We must be innovative. We must come with ways to get into the rural areas. And to our view as CWU, we are still saying no to local urban banking. Thanks very much. And maybe, and lastly, Chair, I want to, to state that in our presentation, we did, not, we did not talk much about the policy directive to the ministry. And we, we did this because we, we applied our mind more with regard to what is happening. And we believe that if it has to be looked into deeply, we, we, we are working or on, on, a, on, on a plan to be able to respond to it at the right time if we have to go that route. We did not also state or relate our, our submission with regard to the legislative framework. And we also did this because we said we didn't want to turn this uh, proceeding into more technical issues. However, at the right time, we'll be able to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, CWU. We have some questions. Am I right? Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, CW, for your submission, which is noted. I have just one question. Whether I trust now or in the submission that you would like to submit further, you can do that. And um, whether LNU is done now, is implemented now or late in a later stage, ICAS is of the view that access to the local loop is already mandated by Chapter 8 of the ECA on facilities leasing. So it is not a matter of whether we should introduce local loop and bundling, but how best do we do it? So my question therefore is, what is CWU view on the legal requirement in the ECA for access providers to use local facilities to access seekers. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. Like uh, I indicated earlier on, 
I believe that we will not be able to respond now and we can do our response in writing as within 14 days. We will humbly do that. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Comrade Vulture. Um, what, uh, what I'm wondering is, you know, looking at your argument um, that LRU won't benefit the disadvantaged, um, there is research that uh, indicates that for, and you may well have heard this research, for every 10% of broadband penetration, there's a 1.38 percentage increase in um, gross domestic product. Now the question then uh, needs to be looked at in broader economic terms. And that, that is to say that if uh, LLU of the copper network um, increases broadband penetration wherever by say 10%, then one sees an increase in the value of the economy as a whole. And that value uh, is important with regard to job creation and economic development. So in a sense, it would be good for you for, to hear your views on coming at it from that way, as opposed to NLU being seen as something connecting or not, the local loop connecting or not connecting in other serviced areas. Um, and uh, this last week we had a, a, a conference of the International Institute of Communications and there a, a Professor H. Nwana from Ofcom indicated that uh, after the introduction of LLU in, in Britain uh, in 2005, around that period, uh, there was 25% broadband penetration. And the recent research indicates that there's now 75% broadband penetration. Um, so there, there are indications that, uh, that LLU can be of value in increasing the penetration of broadband. And if that is the case, then there may be value in, uh, in our case, if we manage to increase uh, see an increase in broadband penetration as a result of access being opened up to the telecom copper network that will benefit the economy and and then uh, job creation so what are your thoughts on this way of seeing things thanks very much chair chair also if if we we look at it from from that way it will be difficult to compare us to to Britain, because as 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 we compare ourselves with Britain, Britain they are far more developed than we are, and then that is why also India Comrade Pasha compared us with the British community to say that if you check those countries, LL is not uh, implemented, and then what we are trying to do here is we are trying to compare apples with apples rather than get something else. Yes. And, and also, like we, we indicated, some of the issues, yes, indeed, can be considered at a later stage. We did not say we should close the doors for any input or issues which will contribute massively towards our broader economy. If that will be the case, the issue we raised was the timing. To say, let's look into the timing, and when we look into that, we can maybe at an appropriate time look into that aspect and the research web which has been cited can be practically maybe or be implemented at that time. Thanks. Uh, through you, Chair. It's the, the, the concern around job losses is obviously a crucial concern that the authority will consider. But if you look at Telcom's annual reports, it showed that ADSL services have not declined, they've jumped. Now this increasing uptake must put pressure on Telcom to improve the efficiency of its labor force and potentially to employ more people 
in the customer service line acquisition area. So in an environment, if LLU was to create growing demand for ADSL services, where the technician is king in the provision of those services, because if the line goes down, somebody's got to go and fix it, do you still see LLU as a threat to jobs rather than an area where more jobs may, may, may be needed to maintain those lines? And further, more people offering more services means more call centers. As you know, the call, call centers have the highest direct job creation potential in South Africa. Uh, the Western Cape is an example of this. Locally, bundling would force new entrants to have call centers to deal with to deal with um, customer complaints and customer service inquiries, which have to be staffed by people. So. LLU may not necessarily have a, be a threat to jobs, it may force an increase in employment of technicians and an increase in employment of, of service related staff. What's CWU's view on that? Thanks very much, Chair. Yes, indeed, there, there's an increase in the ADSL lines. But again, if you check on that, is that the lines are there. The same technical officers who are fixing those lines, they've been fixing them whilst there were voice lines. And then those lines mostly are converted to ADSL. And the same technicians, they are still continuing using, uh, the same technicians are, are fixing this, the same lines. And then also on the, on the test, test centers and call centers, Yes, there will be systems that are used to test and so on, and then for, for job creation, because also in the ICT, what you have observed is that ICT, it, it can grow the economy and so on, but the challenge is the job creation, because every time there will be other innovations to create like the, the test equipment and so on, and then you find that rather than employing 100 people, you need 10 people for that. And then maybe we can say that currently, it can sustain jobs rather than maybe to improve jobs. Unless at a later stage, then we can say, no, now it's improving drastically, then it's whereby it's in improving the jobs. But also while we, we've taken note of the, the environment which is needed to be created, a competitive environment, from the beginning, our, we, we held a position that the ICT services, in particular the telephony aspect, part of it. Government has to play a role. And also, while the issue of the cost has been one of the highlighted elements, we have learned from where we are coming from that competition does not always mean something good towards the citizens because those who will have the competitive edge will make sure that they maximize their profit. We have looked into this aspect and we have seriously considered it like it has been cited. The issue of the call centers is one of the elements we are currently fighting for because we know for fact that those employees are highly and highly used by the employers. They, they are abusing them in actual fact because that, this is part of the, the people called the labor brokers whom we are trying to, to fight against. They are paid low salaries, no benefits, and many other issues. Though we will appreciate to say that at least people are getting the half cents which they are getting, and they ended up being called part of the, the people who are employed in our country while we've got a very high number of unemployed people. It, it is acceptable to say that, yes, indeed, that we have taken note of how the LLU can contribute. And the reason why we said, and we, we raised the issue of the short term and the long term is because, because of the aspect of saying that, yes, that can be a view uh, which we, we don't have facts to prove that, indeed, there will be jobs which will be created. There will be massive jobs which will be created. We are not sure. 
We also looked into the interested parties here who, who will definitely be supporting LNU. We, our, our, our reflection is that we have to be cautious as much as some of the issues will be a risk to, to certain companies. Yes, indeed to us. It become a threat, a risk towards the current jobs where employees are employed in telecom. And this is the reason why we are still holding that position to say, irrespective of what will be happening, we know for the fact that casualties will be there. People will be losing jobs. And we have taken note with regard to, to the aspect and the development with regard to the ADSL and also taking into consideration how it will impact when there are too many providers within the environment. But as the comrade, comrade Sepang has indicated, that is the position we are still holding and we believe that we are correct. And although we don't want to go into the history and how do we prove other issues, we believe we will still consider some of the aspects which have been raised by, by, by the team here in front of us. And we believe at, at the end, we will be able to work together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. I have one question. Uh, what technical barriers exist to local inter offering abandoned services from existing but other utilized exchanges in rural areas? Thanks very much. The, the technical barriers that are there is, first of all, it's, uh, to observation is a copper theft, a cable copper theft. And then also the demand, because what we have observed is that to, to try and, and maybe improve or to increase your, your te te uh, technology uh, capacity in exchange without any demand, it's going to be uh, wasteful. Uh, do we have any questions from the floor for the Commercial Communication Workers Union? This question comes from Amos China from Advini and it's to the CWU and the question is, do you consider that increased competition due to LLU will bring down consumer prices and affordability in <coughs> increase affordability in rural areas? Do you consider that LLU will increase or decrease job opportunities with competitors? Companies like Dava already provide wireless telephony services to areas like Orange Farm, an area with very, very little to no fixed line access. Will companies like Dava not be able to use fixed lines if LLU is implemented and increases penetration and access even further? I'm very sorry, you were too fast for me. I tried to write, I lost it. Can you repeat, please? <laughs> uh, Let's respond to the first question that we consider that increased competition due to NLU will bring down consumer price and affordability in rural areas. Uh, currently, if we are going to respond to the question, we'll be speculating in particular, as we have indicated that there is an imbalance with regard to the network provisioning in our country, particularly the rural areas 
where unless if we are sure that the the network is there but according to our knowledge it, it is bad in terms of the rural areas and we cannot for now indicate whether this the LLU if it's implemented now <coughs> with regard to the increased competition whether it will bring down consumer prices and affordability in rural areas however we can confirm that yes indeed if it is done for those whom we have indicated in 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 these suburbs and 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 our areas here yeah, there will be there will be this um, the competition price the consumer prices will go down and affordability will be there people within the towns they will benefit more than the people in the in the rural areas because we are very sure that the the network is not there in the rural areas Thanks. Uh, the second question that uh, reads, do you consider that LLU would increase or decrease job opportunity or opportunities with competitors? Our observation is that, uh, first of all, we must check like those competitors, if they come in board or on board, how are they going to employ people? And then the ratio per employee of lines, what are they going to, to consider? Maybe like one employee per thousand lines or one employee per five thousand lines, and then we, we currently we cannot say this. Yes, no, it's going to to increase uh, jobs, but to our views that is going to decrease jobs because remember, even in our previous meeting, we, we raised these questions to say that these companies we want them to to come forth to say that these are our proposals or our way on creating jobs, but currently we don't see that they pay. Thanks. Uh, maybe in addition to that, we the issue of job creation and and also the job security is one of the debatable area which we believe that at certain point we we were we were looking to see how how did the ministers perform in terms of the commitment they made to the president and we realized that they. Eh, the commitment was there, but nothing happened in terms of job creation. And this will be the same, because if indeed, like the Comrade Sapa is indicating, if indeed the, the people will be involved or the competitors would like to engage us to look into this area and also where we can, we can agree into some commitments. We are prepared to look into that element. Of, of ensuring that, yes, there will be some increase in job opportunities, not decrease, because we don't believe the idea as it, it came out of the ICASA discussion document is to decrease job opportunities. We do agree that at certain point there will be job opportunities. And also, we would like to also add, if indeed this will happen, we will definitely go for it. And we want to engage with with those players who will be involved to look into some of the opportunities. And maybe we will definitely go the route they are thinking about. The, the question with regard to the, the last question, I would like to ask the comrade to, to respond to this question. There's a, there's a campaign here that, that one of the, the members of the public submitted to say that uh, it's giving access to Rage Farm using uh, wireless. And then it's asking that if LLU, it will, it will be the way to go and then be implemented, this company is what maybe uh, uh, use. Uh, copper cables to give more 
access to, to broadband or, to, or, or, or other services. And then our, our answer to that is that currently if you check, the companies who can provide access to these disadvantaged areas, they are using wireless. And then currently there's, there's, there's no one who will be saying that no, we want to give access using copper to these rural or maybe disadvantaged areas. What these companies are saying that they want to provide broadband to where it's currently being accessed, like the suburbs. And then we, we don't see that these companies maybe will, will, will afford, or maybe they never came forward to say that, yes, we, we want this LLU, and then we want to provide it to the disadvantages uh, to the to the disadvantaged areas. Yeah, maybe in addition also this area, it is our view so that we, we it should not be taken as if the companies did indicate that their concentrations will only be around the rich areas and all that. But it is our view that the companies are more looking into profit making, and they believe that if they access this network which is currently within the telecom poles, they'll be able to, to make more money. That is our view. If we can be also proved wrong, and also companies indicate exactly what do they mean when they are more interested in the aspect of local loop and bundling. What are they what what drives them to be so passionate to say this is what we want? Maybe we'll be able to change our thinking because at certain point our thinking might be based on what we protect more. We are looking into this territory also. We believe that if we protect it, the better it will benefit us. Thank you. Thank you very much, CWU. And with that, we'll take a break now uh, until 11.30 when Vodacom will be. Thank you. Thanks.